What's good, everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Daily Dollar by United Home Relief. I'm Art Morrison III. I'm Kate McCready. And this is episode 19. For those of you who are specifically tuning into this episode to learn what last episode was, last episode was episode 18. This is episode 19, and welcome. We have a really awesome topic or question, right? Last episode, we talked about Airbnb, kind of a general Airbnb conversation we had. So this whole week, we're sticking to the Airbnb topic. And we are going to speak on, are you ready for the question? I guess. Rental arbitrage. Uh, should you do it or should you not in Airbnb? Should Airbnb allow it? We're just talking about all things rental arbitrage. For those of you who don't know what rental arbitrage is, it's when you rent a unit instead of buying it, you don't own it, right? You're paying someone a lease with the understanding that you can get more if you Airbnb it. So you have an agreement with that uh, lessor, if you will, or is it lessee? Whatever. Whatever the landlord is, you have an agreement with them and you say, hey, listen, I'm going to rent your apartment out for this much, but I am going to be airbnb this thing. So are you cool with that? They say yes. Cool. Now you sublease it on a daily basis, a short term basis using the Airbnb app and maybe some other apps. But I want to talk about how good that is for the app or bad. And more importantly, because this is not an like a tech company app review podcast. This is a real estate investor podcast. So I really want to talk about as an investor, do we advise, what's our opinion on it? On rental arbitrage? Is it something you recommend people get into? I'll let you go first with that one. So like as a, like as I'm, like if I'm doing that or if I'm the one that owns it and is renting to somebody doing that, like how are we? That's a good one. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, however you want. Just rhyme all over it. Okay. I mean, because I always think about it from the standpoint of, owning the place and renting it out to somebody who's airbnb who's airbnb it yeah i personally don't see a problem with it as long as i'm getting the money that i want to be getting if I'm, i don't want to airbnb it myself because i don't want to take on the yeah. all the work that comes with turning a unit over that many times a month yeah i mean me personally i would always partner like you're not gonna pay me a flat amount and then just whatever you make, you make. I'm yeah. like, yo, you gotta pay me a flat amount plus a percentage of the profits. That's how I would do it as a if I was an investor and I owned it. In, uh oh. You can turn that speaker off. I'm sorry. Cool. So if I was an investor, you know, I'm not like you're not gonna pay me a flat fee. And then that's it. Whatever you make, you make. I want the flat fee, but I want a percentage of those profits in the form of a partner. Because I do know the one negative is that if you're renting to a lot of people on a daily basis, I know that there's going to be more wear and tear than just one family or one tenant. You think so? I know so for a fact. Even though you're responsible for upkeeping it, meaning if somebody puts a hole in the wall, the tenant, who is the person subleasing, right, can just fix it up and then rent to the other one. But how much fixing up do you think they're going to do? You think they're going to fix up for speed? Or you think they're going to fix up and really care about your property, your asset? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Right, you, you're not going to, you're just going to patch that wall up, throw some paint over it to be able to get it back up and running. Because the only way you're paying rent is Make money, yeah. if it's rented, Yeah. right? So when things occur, I doubt that those that person is going to be coming to me. And then also that's, you know, also in the agreement, right? When things go wrong, who's, whose responsibility is that? Yeah. Because things are going to go wrong. So if you're a tenant long term okay. and you're renting from a landlord and something goes wrong, what do you do? You call the landlord and the landlord fixes it. But if you're subleasing it to 30 different people in a month, you know, that's where it gets dicey because it's like, yo, I just fixed the shower head last month. Why is it broke this month? Uh, because people are freaking hanging from the shower and is that what you do doing you, the nasty. You Airbnb? <laughs> <laughs> I don't personally hang from the shower. I don't need to hang from the shower. I'm six, seven, but yeah. you never know. Some people might want their feet to swing in the shower. I don't know, right? But yeah, okay. Cool. Like, so I, I, I would want some piece of that, right? I would want some. If I'm taking all the risk, my asset. Yeah, that's is that smart. Risk. You would just have to have like a super tight agreement that has that specifically in it. And yeah. Now, what about as a as a like you're an investor and somebody comes to you because people come to me all the time. Yeah. Art. You're an investor, you're getting to it, bro. I'm trying to get like you, bro. But I don't have the money to get started. But I heard about this thing you can do where you rent out Airbnb, where you rent out an apartment and then Airbnb it. What do you think? And then, so what's your answer? I have mine, what's yours? 
I don't, I feel like I don't know enough about like that process. It kind of makes me nervous a little bit. Why? Just because like, I feel like every, like everything would fall on me. It's just so much work for a place that I don't even own. It just, I don't know. I don't think I know enough about it to say like whether I would advise that or, or, or not, but I know people make money off of it. Like I know people do well doing that. So that was my answer. Like, sure, whatever you got to do to make money, just understand that that's yeah. not actual real estate investing. Just keep it a buck. Nobody wants to say that on Instagram and I don't know, I'll probably get a, like Airbnb. Well, like, you don't own anything. Airbnb so. rental arbitrage people are like a cult. They're like, yeah. yo, this is better than investing. This is better than long term. Those are people that don't really know investing. They don't understand the combination of the tax benefit you get, mm -hmm. the appreciation and equity, mm -hmm. Um, and the cash flow. That's the combo that real real estate investors, not to say, no, they are fake real estate investors, but I'm gonna go back on my statement a little bit. I do think people doing rental arbitrage call themselves real estate investors or are not real investors. You're still a re renter, you're still a consumer. So for example, it's like this, it's like, you guys tell me, I wanna, I wanna start a fashion company. I'm starting a fashion, my own clothing line. And I'm gonna go buy shirts from a store, put my design on them, and then resell those shirts for more. What am I? Right, what is my company? Mm -hmm. I don't cut fabric, I don't pick fabric, I just go buy shirts and I add to the design. Hey, you're a brand. I'm something, right? Yeah. So this is why I wanted to segue. Rental arbitrage folks are, there is genius to that, it's very smart. Um, and you can make a lot of money immediately with only a little bit of money out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. So the lesson I want to give is not just to hate on that. I do actually recommend it to people who don't have money and who, like you said, have the stomach and the time to be able to manage it and understand that it all falls on you when that tenant is like, yo, what the hell is going on? Three weekends have gone by and the cops have been in my property in three weekends in a row. Yeah, it's just a lot. What like, are you doing? So I know people do. But let me finish my point, right? Too. So what I'm saying is that understanding that and all that, that if that's what you want to do, do it. But what I was saying is that um, you can't, don't pose it as investing and have a larger goal of what to do with that capital. You know what I'm saying? Like that, you just understand you're taking on that risk. I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying, understand you take on that risk. When you have an opportunity in any business, everyone pay close attention. When you have an opportunity in any business to make a lot of money fast for a little bit of work, you are taking on the risk. But what I was saying, Kate, um, and I'll let you go in a second, not just the risk that Kate is saying of like taking on that pressure, the risk of what we talked about last episode, regulation. Atlanta came out the blue and said, yep, no more rental arbitrage in this district. Can't do it no more. We're not doing it. You can't rent in it. You can't do Airbnb unless you own the property, right? St. Petersburg, where we live is like, nope, you can't Airbnb unless it's a 30 day or more rental or unless you live in one of the units in the Airbnb, right? So townships, municipalities, cities, states, even at the federal level can just make a law, right? And now your business has changed like that. So although you made a ton of money, maybe in the first month, first two months, now you built this whole system that immediately can get changed at the drop of somebody else's regulation. Additionally, your tenant's regulation, the tenant can say, no, nah, I'm terminating the lease. Or a year could go by, you made a bunch of money and they're like, yeah, I'm not gonna do it no more, sorry. Right, you never fully have control, which was the fourth benefit. We said equity, tax benefits, appreciation, power and control is a major part of the rental arbitrage system that I don't like. You don't really have power and control over that property, period. What were you saying before though? I have no clue, but yeah, Airbnb is fairly new, so they're still regulating it everywhere. Yeah, they're and still there's figuring new it out. Rules all the time. So. And again, I'm, I just want to be clear. I'm and not be fishing for clickbait. So, uh, you know, I don't want you guys to think I hate rental arbitrage. I do like it, just like I like wholesaling. Just know that that's a means to an end to get into the real investing, even house flipping, bro. Like that ain't it. And we flip a lot of houses. That's a great way to make some cash. But at the end of the day, the real ownership and the real investing is when you purchase property. We purchase real assets, real property, real estate, and you hold on to it and you tap into all the benefits, depreciation, appreciation, uh, tax depreciation, excuse me, let me be clear, tax depreciation, appreciation, and equity, cash flow, 
and then power and control. That's like really where you grow your wealth. But if you want to make some money real quick, yeah, rental arbitrage, highly recommend. If you got the time too. Sounds like fun, yeah. It sounds like a lot of fun. You yeah. get to design and all that. And you don't take on any of like the, the real, real risk, but you do have some immediate risk where literally somebody in an office somewhere in a dusty ass gray suit, uh, some bureaucrat in some city somewhere can just make a law and now all of a sudden your whole business crumbles. You're stuck in a 12 month lease. Right. They did that four months in, so now you have to pay it off, like, or break your lease or somehow, whatever. Pay yeah. Double the amounts of a month. Yeah. But think about that at scale. You saying one property? Imagine you, you up, you got twelve of them in the same city. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. And then now something like that happened, yeah. which has happened to people though. It's happened to. I've watched people follow them on IG, like, yo, they get into it, man. We need to get into Airbnb. I'll pull you. I have your ear till like midnight. Like, nah, babe, yeah. we need to do Airbnb. I've seen them just stop posting. I love Airbnb. Just, just like they just go missing from Instagram. They're not as loud. It's like the crypto people. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's like, yo, when it's up, they like, yo, yo, no, nah, crypto better than any investment. This, that. I haven't seen the word NFT, NFT. on social media in so long yeah. because of that. And I'm just like, yo, if you're a true businessman, a man or woman, if you're a true investor or whatever, like, yeah, you gotta take the good with the bad. You gotta share the losses. You gotta navigate new ways to make money. If you're a hustler. And you just like, okay, I'm gonna do Airbnb, crypto, this, that, investing stocks, forex trading, real estate, wholesaling. Then yeah, sure. Uh, I commend your hustle and just keep bouncing around and make sure the cash register is always ringing. But if you want to build real wealth, <laughs> if you want to build real wealth, it comes from systems, operations, and consistency. Mm -hmm. And I don't trust the consistency just yet of Airbnb. So look, that's episode 19 of The Daily Dollar. Once again, I'm Art Morrison III. I'm Kate McCready. Follow me on IG. I didn't tell y'all last episode, but follow me on IG at Art Morrison III. Where can they find you? At Hi Kate McCready. Awesome. Hi with an H-I. She never likes to clarify, but it's important. It's so weird. Why would it be H-I-G-H, -H, you know? It could be H-I-G-H, -H, it could be H-A-I. We do this every time. All right. Yeah, okay. spell it. Art Morrison III, Hi Kate McCready on IG. Visit uh, unitedhomerelief.com to learn more about what it is that we do. And catch all these episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to YouTube, leave a review, share with friends. Because I'd like to think we're giving game and dropping some gems on here. And we're just really cool and good looking. Yeah. and That's why I would listen. Wealthy. Okay, cool. Anyway, oh, that's why you would listen? Yeah. Just for, to see good looking people? Just to hear good looking people. To hear good looking people. Yeah, I listen to podcasts. I don't watch them. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, for all my, my podcasts. I can't it's say podcast. All my podcast it. watchers. Right. Cut. <laughs> cut. 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 <laughs> anyway, that's episode 19. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Peace.